Hello and welcome to my new tutorial series on how to play yeah, Chinchi this time and I will show you how to play Chinchi. For this I will take a pretty crowded map with 8 opponents, so 9 people on a 324 map on lakes because the best the map types where Chinchi is good are mostly dry no, lakes dry land or continent they have to be pretty crowded but with not much water because water is pretty difficult to get it's pretty difficult to get on the water as chinchi and yeah you it's better for you to stay on land as chinchi train a second warrior at the start because it will help you take many villages that you see later, for example, like here too. And the thing with Jinchi is he has more mountains and more gold, as you can see here. But on the other hand, he has also very versatile resources, which isn't always an advantage. As seen, for example, here, he has two fruits, two forests or animals and two metal. And yeah, you can't combine them properly, but it isn't that bad because as Chinchi, you have, in my experience, I have played them multiple times, one or two strategies for the early game. You can either go archery and then smithery or smithery and then archery. These two techs vary, uh, yes, they help each other a lot and you can combine them pretty well because the swordmen have three attack and three defense and are strong melee units that will help you smash through the enemy lines and the archers have two attack and one defense but they have two range and this helps them yeah weaken the units before your swordmen finish you off finish them off and i would say that i take yeah, for the purpose of the video, I will take mining because mostly in my experience, you go mining. It's also important to see your opponent pretty quickly as Chinchi. You can't really influence that, but if you start on isolated like place on the map, it's pretty bad for you because you mostly want to have opponents nearby. Here I also take hunting before I get swordmen, because swordmen on their own, the tech isn't a priority, smithery isn't the most important thing. Smithery is like more of a bonus, but you have to get mining first and then halt, and then go on. Here I got uh, pretty lucky with uh, defeating an opponent early on, but now because I have Badur and he is pretty big, it seems like, yeah, he has two cities already, I will start to attack him. First I get forestry because with forestry I can upgrade this city. And then I get organization as well, just some eco to get your better income and after i have gotten this income i just well will get swordman here you can already see a tribe who has yeah destroyed my warriors and they are coming with a pretty big army and then i just get smithery but not yet archery because i want to get the archers later they aren't that important first it's more important to get your swordman first and then yeah look at the archers later the advantage with swordman the swordman give you an advantage in the early game because they allow for strong combat early on so that means that they are just strong units they they can yeah, defeat others quickly and pose a big threat at the beginning of the game 
and it's not advisable to you to lose them quick so you have to um, on the un on the one hand you have to be aggressive with them but on the other you can't allow allow yourself or you can't yeah just lose them because they are pretty uh, pricey units and yeah they cost a lot so you will always have to think about do i have the economy for them as you can see here my swordman push yeah paid off and now i have the possibility of sieging the capital of Badur. my archers didn't show off really but i will try to show them off here i will just upgrade the city get an archer well after you have gotten some swordmen you can start you can start getting yeah higher as well, more leveled units up and just attacking further and further the advantage with swordmen is that you get them pretty quickly as Shinji and they go pretty well into your overall resource yeah resource distribution and the forges also allow for a lot of giants like here for example I can get crazy amount of giants just with one forge And the monument. I have already three giants. And well, as I've shown here, you can with your swordman capture other places pretty quickly and then just go on and destroy what's left of the other tribes. And the main idea is that your archers are mostly support and just try to weaken the units so they are wanted. And then you take the other units, the, your swordmen, and they will destroy the rest. Also, as Chinchi, you can... Yeah, you have the possibility on fighting on multiple yeah different fronts because in the early game but it is not re really good because the thing is your swordman can yeah limit the effectiveness of other units because for example if we say yes and i don't know we have five warriors five warriors from the opponent might not stand a chance against your two swordmen or something and while they are the same price they need more units later on to destroy these two swordmen while your swordmen are getting leveled up and yeah this is of course not the case if you are having other warriors then you will have to replenish the supply of warriors all the time the thing with Chinchi is that there are sometimes problems uh, with defenders for example with the strategy and they might pose a big threat because well to your strategy not to your cities or something but because they are so defensive units and your strategy is mostly uh, yeah focused on attack it might be a problem for you if you don't get enough possibilities on attacking the opponent but 
most of the time it works pretty consistently and pretty well. Also, the city walls are a big problem. Because, yeah, they also, combined with Defenders or Swordmen, can... Yeah, can force you to use a lot of support troops just to get this one city. Then you just will have to get catapults or something just yeah to destroy one city. And this is pretty costly for you. But if you play this strategy multiple times, you will get yeah, the idea on how to play it properly. And... By the time your swordman push stops really working, you mostly will have a pretty large empire already and then you will be able to go on and fight like a normal tribe. So what are the disadvantages and advantages of Chinchi altogether? First, their increased metal and mountain spawn rate helps them in the early game with more vision and with yeah higher giant production at the end but this also limits their early game economy because the resources are too versatile for them and you will have to get a lot a lot of technologies to upgrade all of your cities if you therefore i mostly advise chinchi to go for the archery and smithery or smithery and then archery strategy because you can conquer your near neighbors quickly and these neighbors are yeah they can't you can only dif with great difficulties defend against a big swordman push if it's done properly with archers and support and giants coming up and from swordmen and archers you can quickly transition into catapults and giants and these are both pretty strong attacks that if they come unexpected you have big problems defending them one thing you will have to watch out is that your swordmen while they are pretty strong on their own need to be in groups one swordman won't do the trick most of the time and you will need to get two or three and two or three archers in support too then you can start a proper push which is much more difficult to defend one yeah the advantage of archery is that it gives you defense bonuses in forests and because you have climbing already which gives you defense bonuses in mountains this allows you to always get defense bonuses and this is a pretty good thing all in all, I hope this helped you. And if you have enough, if you have ideas on how to improve my videos, then just text me in the comments and like and subscribe if you like this video. Thank you. Bye.